Hello and welcome to the Papre.com where we're looking forward to the pre-game talk show of the Bradby Shield encounter, the 74th encounter between Trinity and Royal College, the longest unbroken rugby match in schools in this league tournament as well. It's a league match, don't forget that as well at the Royal Complex on the 21st of uh, April 2018. It's 39 wins to Trinity so far, 33 wins to Royal and two legs have been drawn. So that's something that Royal will be aiming to bridge the gap uh, on Trinity College and make it 39 to 33 at the end of this two-legged encounter, the first of which will be this Saturday. So to look forward to that and anticipate what we can see on uh, that 70 minutes at the Royal College Sports Complex, we have two esteemed gentlemen from both schools to talk to us about what we might see on uh, the pitch on uh, Saturday. Uh, we have uh, with us uh, on my far left, uh, Halik Wadud, captain of the Trinity Outfit in 2013, and uh, next to him, Shoaib Jabba, senior colorsman from the Royal team in 2013. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Shanika. Mm -hmm. It's Bradby week. You guys must be quite in, uh, quite uh, anticipatory and quite excited about it, are I you? I think that's quite accurate. <laughs> I think that's, that's true because we're excited. As ever. This is one thing, I mean, most of the rugby, past rugby players is one thing we look uh, uh, looking to, especially from Trinity College and Royal. Definitely. Rugby yeah. is really important to us. Yeah, well, not just Trinity and Royal. I think for everyone who follows schools rugby, this is kind of the apex event in the school's calendar. It's come quite early on in the season so far, but let's talk about you guys and how you all met on the field. That encounter in 2013, Trinity won 37 points to 25 in the first leg, and it was one of those rare comebacks, wasn't it, Shoeb, where you actually came through and won the second leg, 39, yeah. but just didn't have quite enough points. Quite intense game, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just didn't have enough points. How did that feel at the end? Um, I think at the end of the game, uh, it was... Uh, there was there was one goal as a team, and when we went into the second leg, um, the focus was on winning the match for starters, and uh, then of course hopefully move on to sort of uh, win on the aggregate as well. Uh, but I think one of the main goals that we had is we were not going to let our position over our try line, mm -hmm. and I think that was something uh, we were able to do. Uh, however the better team did ultimately uh, emerge as the winners on the aggregate, of course. A big 12-point margin going into that match, uh, Harlik, and, but you would have been a little disappointed that you couldn't win both of them. Yeah, that's true, but like uh, <coughs> Shweb said, our aim was also on the Brad Bichel, and uh, we knew it was not going to be easy on the second leg because, uh, I mean, uh, it's never easy. We, we can never forecast, I mean, how the Royal team would perform when it comes to Brad because you can never... Uh, expect them to play the same way they played the uh, league match. It's different, it's the bad way. But we expected a really good match and like we expected, it was a really good match. It was one of the best matches that Trinity has ever played. There was so much good defences. We upheld good qualities of this uh, game. Yeah, I think before the game, uh, I mean rather before the show, um, Harley and I were having a chat about uh, if we broke the game into um, halves. And uh, what I was saying is, in my personal opinion, that Royal actually lost the second half of the first leg. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, with a team like Trinity, you can't afford to give away even a half. And at the end of the day, that half cost us, quite literally. Yeah, day, so. it, it did. So anyway, Harlik, uh, you, you had bragging rights on that occasion. It remains <laughs> to be seen whether you'll still have it at the end of the match uh, on, <laughs> on Saturday. Uh, let's look at how last year's uh, match went, the 73rd. Uh, it was also going to be the league decider. And that was something that was much more um, exacerbated in that sense that it was not just a Bradbury, it was going to be the league decider as well. And in the end, Royal coming through and winning that one second leg, they won 13 points to eight. And that was also a five point lead from the first leg and you all won 35 points to 25, uh, Shoaib. And that would have been very satisfying. Definitely, definitely. It's always good to have uh, the points on your side. Uh, but I guess if you do look at the scores, uh, it's quite close and it's safe to say that both teams did put up quite a show. Uh, but it's always, there's always a little bit of a difference this way, that way and uh, one team does emerge above the other. 
Well, you had quite a few uh, years, uh, Harlick, where Trinity College are dominating this fixture. That seems to have tipped the other way, especially when you look at last year's and the one before that, and uh, there was a draw recently as well. So, uh, what, what do you think, the, where do you think the change was made? Uh, talking about last year, we actually started the, the season very well. We were, we were uh, the top of the group, uh, and then it was after, I mean, after, I, I believe it was the St. Peter's match and the St. Joseph's match that we started getting on the back foot. But uh, when it comes to Bradby, we were down by uh, five, points five points in the first leg, and we expected uh, the boys to put up a good show on the second leg, which they did. It's just out, uh, it's just that Royal rose out better than Trinity. They put their empty, they emptied the tanks and put their hearts out on the field that day. Well, one thing I always hear from Royalists and Trinitians, especially, well, not even those who play, but especially those who played, they always say that it's not the league form doesn't count. In, in a Bradby. Can Definitely. you explain that to me and the rest of us uh, minions somehow? Well, that's true, but I don't, I don't think that's a better perception to look at the season because if you think you're going to beat the season, if you have your priorities straight, the league will be the most important. I mean, I have played uh, Trinity, I've played for Trinity, I've captained the uh, uh, Bradby teams, but uh, Bradby is important, but if you, can, if you focus more on the league, the Bradby will just come to you. Uh, that, that's that's good. It's always good to have uh, Bradby uh, in your mind at all times. But I think it's better to go one match at a time. You know, you should take it slow, and the Bradby will just fall into its place. But yeah, so actually, so uh, does that happen though? Uh, well, actually, being completely <laughs> honest, um, I would think that Royal has not predominantly uh, been focusing on the league. Uh, we've always said that you know it's Bradby, it's Bradby, it's Bradby, and if the league comes, hey, good. Mm. Uh, but uh, I think over the years that perception has changed as well. We've started to look at the bigger picture and I think in terms of sustainability for the team as well as the game and even at a national level, it's really important that that perception is there because it's not just winning matches. You need to win the tournament. You need to win the league. And I, I think I do have to agree with Harley uh, to a great extent about, you know, if you're training to win overall, you're talking about outperforming all the teams and that's going to include the Bradby. But having said that, um, I do have to agree with what you said as well. Bradby is the outset and the preparation for it, how you play on the day, the pressure, the audience, the build-up. It's an absolutely different ball game. And um, it's one of those games where regardless of how you've performed through the season, you say, you know what, forget everything. Forget everything. It's Bradby now. And you start from the bottom and you just focus on winning that shield and bringing it back home. So I think that does definitely make the game on the day something different to the other matches. Uh, but I think a more sustainable view should ideally be to focus on the league overall. I what? agree in that. Like if like if you if you pick an under twelve player who's playing for college and if you ask him what's your goal like when you play most certainly team, and uh, I don't know they always say we want to win the Bradby exactly. when, I'm, when we are the senior team. The attitude uh, you have in you when you play the Bradby is different from what you play uh, the other matches. It's, it's, it's the whole environment, the atmosphere, everything else is different. Actually. Well, Harlik, I'm sure you'd agree that that's a good attitude to have, especially in this time's fixture. <laughs> because <laughs> because yes. c compared to last year, let's compare the teams, uh, the Trinity teams from last year to this year. Uh, you had a brilliant team, started out with a stunning win against Wesley in 2017, uh, put 40 points on them and everybody thought, wow, this is the Trinity team that's finally going to win a league title. Suddenly all fell away. And this year, it seems like a shadow of that team, Halik, despite having several players uh, from that side. So clearly they have to be focusing on the Bradby because their lead form has been rubbish. Uh, yes, I agree with you on that, but um, what I would also like to say is uh, when we started the season, true, we were on the back foot, but over the games, I see so much of uh, good improvement. We have improved so much, not in, I mean, not in terms of rugby per se, but also the attitude, how the change, I mean, you see the players, the way they play, you see the difference in them. Over the matches, I think a lot has been improved and all I can say is uh, we are expecting, I spoke with the boys, we are expecting a really good match. Uh, on Saturday, there are some who might have, uh, you know, who are think, who might think, okay, okay, don't know what's going to happen this time. I think it's obvious all is going to win, but uh, the boys have trained really well, and uh, I think they will put up a good fight. They'll be very challenging, and this is going to be a really tough match because no matter what happens, how Trinity Royal both teams when they play the Bradby, they you can't judge them by how they performed at the previous matches. When they play the Bradby, it's completely new. You can never expect that. 
Well, interesting one. So uh, what's in store uh, this time, uh, Shoaib? Because I've watched the Bradby. I think I was telling you guys, it's a 74th encounter. I've been watching it since <laughs> yeah. the 47th. Longer than uh, we've known it. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, issue, the issue is that uh, the, f the only time I've seen Royal as such overwhelming favourites were in 2001 and two and in 2009. Even in 2015, they weren't overwhelming favourites and they certainly weren't favourites for the league. But this year, uh, they are a team that look like they are the ones to be beaten. So is that something that gives them a lot of confidence or is it, oh my God, we've got everything to lose? Um, I think uh, in terms of our team this year, yes, most certainly on paper, they do look uh, like the fitter team to win this game. Um, but I think it's also going to be a lot of pressure. Uh, having had such a good record all along this season. And I think the performance of the boys has improved from match to match. And looking at the last game that they played, most certainly the toughest game so far. And how they stepped up to face a side like that. And how they did perform against sides I would think they had a fair chance of winning. Really shows how much they can step it up when they need to. And I think, like I said, on paper, yes. Most certainly, they look like the stronger side, but uh, following on to what we discussed just a little while ago, it, it is the Bradby, and uh, you've got the Bradby pressure. You've got the fact that you've got a side like Trinity, uh, who also has the Bradby in their mind and that whole attitude. And on top of that, you've got the overwhelming audience, uh, expectations, coaches, the team, parents, all of that. It's quite a lot of pressure mm -hmm. to handle. And yeah, I think the last game was pretty tough, but this might even be tougher in terms okay. of the overall pressure that the boys might need to handle. You talked about coaches, and uh, that's an interesting segue into Royal's current coaching structure. Yes, uh, Dushant Levike has been with the team. He's been the forwards coach, the assistant coach, the strength and conditioning coach for a few years now. But it's been almost a seamless transition uh, to head coach. And the, uh, and the Royal is, I think they were criticized for playing a lot of eight-man rugby for a while, but suddenly they've just exploded. Yeah, actually, that's, that's something that even I would say. I mean, predominantly, we've been known uh, to be a team that depends on our pack, and it's the pack and the rolling ball. And um, even in our years when we played, that was more or less our strategy, you know, get in there half at mall, right? Uh, and it's, it's really nice to see this change in the style of rugby. Um, something that we have been criticised for a lot is that we play boring rugby. And, uh, I mean, argument was, hey, we're winning games, so who cares, right? Uh, but deep down, it is also nicer to see a new brand of rugby. It's more certainly more intense, it's more unpredictable, and it's certainly beautiful to watch. Yeah. So, in terms of the transition, I have to say, I can't really say it's something I really expected. I've known Dushant Luke, I've played under his coaching as well, and he's done a brilliant job with the pack. And I've never really seen him handle you know, the line as well. But coming in as head coach, it's, it's not just the rugby, you know. It's, you've got to manage everything from the players to the parents, college, all of that. It's, it's not an easy job. The coaching is just going to be a small part of his job. And I think uh, it's safe to say that overall, based on the results we're seeing, he seems to be doing a good job. Yeah, he seems to be doing a fantastic job. And Nahalik, uh, much more higher profile, if I could use uh, that word, without any disrespect to uh, Dushant, in terms of your coaching staff. Lotte Raikambula, celebrated uh, All Black Sevens player, he's been with you for a few seasons now. Uh, I've heard that he had to go back for a bereavement very recently in it's the lead really up to the Bradby. Yes. Uh, that's really unfortunate. But at the same time, uh, highly paid coach, but the results not quite matching that uh, investment. Uh, you see, you, you can't really uh, blame the coach over there because I know he's doing a very good job. A lot of us know that he's doing a really good job. It's just that, you know, it's just that you don't see the expected results on the field on the, the match day. Uh, you can't, it's, it's, it's really difficult to figure out what's going wrong in there unless you're really in that team. So uh, me being an outsider, I might have played, but I've never played under him. I've not played with this team. So it's from the outside, it's, it, no one can judge what's going wrong in there. So I think it's up to the players. They just need to get this into, the, get, get this into their heads and play a, a good game on Saturday. Yeah, so who, who are the players that you're looking for uh, there, Harlik? Obviously, Sheik will have to step up as the captain. You know how important the captain is uh, to that Trinity Lions dressing room. But who are the other players you'd expect to uh, come through? Uh, along with uh, Sheik, we have a really good line. Uh, uh, we have players like Warren Virakun, who's a really strong player. 
and who really gains extra yards and sucks in a lot of defense. Along with him, uh, guiding him is uh, Navin Rajaratnam, who is also have, who has been terrific throughout both season last year and this year. They just seem to be under a lot of pressure this year, but they'll get out of it. They'll just get out of their shell. We also have a really good uh, wing three quarter, if I may say, uh, Vishwa Rana Raja, who has also been. Yeah, he has got a lot of pace. He's, he's really good there. It's just that he hadn't been able to uh, find that opportunity yet. But um, I think everything will fall into place on Saturday. And uh, through the pack, uh, Lennox Kalyana has been has been outstanding. You know, he has been able to uh, hold that pack together. He has been able to guide that pack. Uh, and the pack has been really good uh, consistently, I would say. Yeah, Lennox playing against his old school, that must be, uh, that must be a huge... I was just telling Harley when we walked in, there was a video playing and mm -hmm. Lennox was running and I was like, hey, Mata, he's wearing the wrong jersey. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it, 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 must be, it must be huge for him as well, the first time he's going to be playing against... Honestly, Charlie I, I cannot uh, imagine the pressure that he's facing um, as an individual. Uh, but a lot of people have actually asked me, hey, what do you think, was it the right move? Well, my personal opinion when I played for college, what I saw and... The reason I played, I would say it's the wrong call. But that's my personal opinion. Things are different now. Maybe it's the same, maybe it's not. Uh, and what I tell everyone who asks me, what do you think about him moving is, it's his choice. You know, I mean, he has the right to play wherever he wants to if, if any team would have him. I mean, it's simple. Uh, you might have heard Simon Sinek. He has a couple of rules that he follows. Um, he calls it the five rules of life. And one of it is that you can do whatever you want as long as you're willing to accept the repercussions. And that's just what it is. I mean, Lennox probably assessed that these are his reasons why he wanted to make a shift. This is why he wanted to shift to this particular school. And um, as long as he's willing to accept whatever comes with that decision, I think it's really his choice. Well, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll depend on the scoreboard whether his Royalist buddies will be reminding him <laughs> of that or not. But uh, let's talk about uh, uh, Royal College as well. You've got some key players. Sabit Ferros, the captain, once oh, again yeah. has been outstanding. He was brilliant in the uh, Michael Gunaratna trophy. Yes. Uh, who are the other players you're looking to step up there? Uh, well, I think someone we can really depend upon is our fullback. And uh, not just the conversions, I think he's been quite accurate with his conversions, but even the game, he's maintained quite a composure under the high ball and uh, he seems to be making the right calls in terms of clearing the ball. And uh, having played in the pack, I have to say, having a kicker like that really, uh, you know, sort of helps you preserve some petrol in the tank. So You're not going to work on a young guy, right? Definitely, yeah. and, and seems to be handling it mm -hmm. really well. So. And uh, then, of course, we've got our combination of the centres who have been doing an outstanding job. Uh, it's just so much confidence knowing you have someone that strong to carry the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, not just carrying the ball, I think it's important to also see that they make the right decisions. Because having the physique is one thing, but making the right course, creating those opportunities is something that we've seen from the centres. And I know a lot of credit has been given towards one centre more than the other, but I think that combination is really important. Yeah, it is a wonderful performance between um, uh, Tuleib Hassan and uh, Jani Dilshan. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is the best Royal Centre combination I've seen since uh, Jaya Sundara and Kalwarachi very think many it's years ago. hard to disagree with that. Yeah, it's, and also <laughs> in, in the pack, you've got some big boys. You've got Hirushan, who's really leading from the front, Definitely. Farid and Risita Fernando as well. Yes, and I think uh, we, we really need to pay attention to uh, the body posture that I've seen some of the boys uh, carrying the ball. And... Uh, I think that's a real threat near the try line because it's really hard to, to sort of stop someone going that low and having that much of balance on their feet. I think that's going to be a real asset around the rucks uh, and especially near the try line. Yeah, and uh, let's see how uh, Royal can disrupt that uh, Trinity set piece as well. Adahan has been uh, imperious in the lineouts, and that's going to take some stopping as well. Gentlemen, before we go, Harlik, I'm going to ask you first. Uh, what's the prediction going to be? First leg? First leg, uh, it's really hard to predict something uh, given the situation, but I know that the boys will play their hearts out, they will empty their tanks because this is not just another game of rugby, this is going to be the 74th uh, bad B encounter. It's not just another game that you see all the time. This is important. I believe the boys would take it into their hearts and they have no regrets after the 80th minute, after the 70th minute now. I hope they have no regrets because if you have regrets about a particular match, then it means that you have not given your everything on that particular day. So 
it's going to be a really tough match. Uh, Trinity is facing a really good team. Royal has been outstanding throughout the season, as we know. It's going to be a really tough match. But uh, in the end, may the better team win. There have been uh, there's been a few uh, a few rumors flying around about Royal is saying, okay, is the record going to be broken this time, Harlik? What do you say to them? I say we'll see what happens on that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's an easy that's an easy out. <laughs> uh, Shay, what do you think is going to happen? Well, um, in all honesty, looking at it from an objective point of view, I think uh, on paper it's safe to say that Royal does have the stronger side and. Uh, the chances are higher for them to emerge victorious at this encounter. Uh, that being said, uh, we can't forget the note we started on, this being the Brad B, and I'm sure, like Karlik did point out, they're going to bring out their A game. And even looking at Trinity, I've seen improvement from game to game. So I think this is another game that they're coming into, having played four games. Uh, a lot they've learned as well. And I think it's important for Royal as well to maintain their composure, uh, not take it to their heads that they've been outstanding because like we've been saying time and time again it's Bradby it's going to be a different atmosphere so much of expectation hopes it's not just another game for Royalists and Trinitians and I would think even for any rugby fan in Sri Lanka so I think it's really important I, I most certainly believe that the boys have what it takes to get it done but at the end of the day you've got to go there and do it so it's uh, number one versus number four, if we're looking at the league, league table. It's, yeah. it's Royal versus Trinity, who are fourth in the, the Division One uh, A group. But what about the mental strength of this Royal team? I think it's right up there. Are they going to feel the pressure as much as we say they are, or are they just going to come out there and get the job done? Well, I think I have to agree with you. Like I said um, a couple of minutes back, uh, the St. Joseph's game, I really saw the boys step it up. And I, I'm watching the past few games, I've seen Royal sort of be more of a second-half team. And um, I felt like they lacked a bit of intensity in the first half, but I really saw it coming in the second half. But having to win that St. Joseph's game, I think really required a lot of intensity mm -hmm. and it required a lot of mental toughness. So to answer your question, yes, I think... The boys have the mental toughness that requires. But having played a Bradby um, and having seen even teams that were definite league champs going to Bradby uh, and the pressure that they have, uh, not to say that they're going to fumble the ball and make an entire mess, but it's a whole different pressure entirely. It's, it's a different ball game, if I am to uh, sort of, you know, say so. Uh, so, yeah, I do believe they have the mental toughness without a doubt to play this game. But that pressure. <laughs> <laughs> that Harlick, pressure. Harlick, they've, <laughs> they've got nothing to lose. You give us a score. Hmm. I, I don't. I don't want to take that chance. I don't want to take that chance. Okay. Being out of school. You're not. A, you're not a betting man. Sure, but I don't think you are going to be. <laughs> no, as, no, <laughs> not my policy. <laughs> Okay. Well, with those non-predictions, we come to the end of our this pre-game discussion of the 74th Bradby Shield encounter. Halik Wadud and Shiv Jabba, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you for having us. Well, don't forget to tune in on thepapare.com on Saturday the 21st of April 2018 at 3.30pm, the 74th Bradby, live on the Papare. <laughs>